crews at Japan's damaged nuclear plant must navigate high and potentially lethal levels of radiation every day. In some areas at Fukushima Daiichi, they can only work for short periods of time. In others, they can't work at all. So engineers are racing to develop the technology that will offer full access with minimal risk. NHK World's Noriko Okada has the story. Right after the accident, TEPCO engineers sent a remote-controlled robot inside one of the reactor buildings. The device detected tremendously high levels of radiation, and it managed to make it out. Since then, TEPCO has used several robots to survey dangerous areas at the crippled plant. The utilities need for the technology has pushed developers to design robots that can go where humans cannot. Researchers and engineers are trying to make devices that can carry out more advanced decommissioning tasks. Some attended a convention in January. They are now focused on designing robots that can do decontamination work. This robot uses a laser technology to clean up the radioactive substances. The arm stick out of the device emits the beam. The laser can evaporate radioactive substances. Then the robot uses a vacuum to collect the radioactive dust. This model is designed to cut through rubble, which is littered inside reactor buildings because of the explosions. We're proud of this robot, which will be used in areas inside Fukushima Daiichi where no people can go. The most daunting challenge is removing extremely radioactive nuclear fuel from the damaged reactors. TEPCO officials say Molten fuel burned through the damaged reactors and piled up at the bottom of the containment vessels. The fuel is inaccessible right now. Engineers are exploring ways to reach it. They are trying to develop a 30-meter-long robotic arm. It would have special sensors inside that would create a 3D picture, so engineers could monitor its movement. Radiation could affect all electronic parts of the robot, so we have to overcome that hurdle. This institute is developing a laser for the robotic arm. Teams of engineers are working on one that would slice through the melted-down nuclear fuel, which is now extremely hard. They also need the laser to work underwater. The reactors must be filled with water to shield the emission of radiation from the fuel. The institute ran an experiment using a mock reactor. The engineers injected gas into water to clear a path for the laser so the beam wouldn't weaken. Then they aimed the laser at the simulated fuel and managed to cut some of it. But the fuel at the Fukushima plant is expected to be more difficult to deal with. Some of it mixed with debris when it melted down, making it much harder than the simulated fuel. TEPCO engineers don't fully understand the condition it's in. This is a huge challenge. We have to combine techniques in ways that we have never tested before. Some combinations will work, but in other cases we will have to make fundamental adjustments. There are still many hurdles. Engineers haven't figured out how to collect and remove the fuel. And TEPCO workers would need to carry out the job in three reactors. For now, they know the technology they need is a long way away from being put into practice. Noriko Okada, NHK World.